This is one of my highly anticipated games and man oh man is it a ton of fun. I got some tips and tricks I've been playing for a few days now. First thing I want to go over is the heroes and understanding the heroes because there are different classes to the heroes. Now the game doesn't like tell you what the classes do unfortunately like you can see this one says great leader but if you click on it it doesn't give us like any information at all so i have some information to go over with the different classes first one we got is going to be champion now anytime you see a character that has the champion class that typically means that they are a big damage dealer you always want to have at least one of these in your team if not even two possibly three depending on your build anytime you see a hero with the great leader class this means they're going to be a support supporting character usually great leaders are healers so if we take a look at tiger lily's ability we can see that we go ahead and we heal all friendly units next one we got is going to be commanders commanders typically do like aoe damage they also can be uh, buffers as well next one we got is manipulators anytime you see a manipulator class they are going to be crowd control heroes for example targets the biggest cluster of enemy units he reduces the accuracy so he's putting a debuff on them and then the final one we got is going to be geniuses i actually just pulled thomas edison really cool character i got to go ahead and build him out genius characters are going to be putting out traps they're going to be doing some tactical maneuvering around the map we take a look at thomas edison's he teleports into a large cluster of enemy units causes an explosion, deals damage, blah, 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 blah. Their abilities have them like teleporting, they're moving around the map. Um, Next is gonna be one of the biggest questions I think a lot of new players are gonna ask. And that's gonna be, what is the best way to spend your premium currency right here? the green gems couple different ways you can use these and I think there's one way that is like the the best. First way you can use it is to go ahead and expand your territory. Now, at the beginning, I went ahead and I did this and I highly regretted it. I wasted a bunch of my uh, gems to do this. And it's to me, I don't think it's worth it to expand your territory. Uh, you get reward expansions from going ahead and just completing the campaign. So every time you go through the campaign and you complete different chapters, different uh, missions, levels, whatever you want to call it, you're going to get this as a reward. So do it that way, do it the natural way, just get through the campaign. Uh, another way is to go ahead and use your gems for summons. This is another thing that I, I don't think is a good idea. It's really, really expensive for these, especially for like a 10 pull. Just one pull is 200 gems, which is a lot just for one. The game gives you the antimatter for free, again, by just going through the campaign missions. Just go through the campaign, complete quests and things like that. We have our quests in the top left corner right here. You click on this. As you go ahead and complete these, you'll get antimatter and you'll get a bunch of other rewards and stuff. So do it that way. The other way is with stamina. You can go ahead and you can buy stamina. This is probably like the second best option because you do run out of stamina very fast in this game. And that's pretty much your one of your biggest bottlenecks. And that kind of stops you from continuing to play. You kind of got to have to wait for your stamina to regenerate. Or you can go ahead and watch an ad. But watching an ad only gives you 8 stamina. So this would be like the second best bet if you want to continue to play. Where you get to a point where like you want to keep grinding but you're out of stamina. Then you would go ahead and do it. But my number one best way to use your gems is going to be through the special buildings. And that is because there's no other way to unlock these buildings. They are exclusively hard locked behind the gems. So if we go into our buildings and we take a look at some of these, we have like a home, we have a farm, and we also have a cultural site. There are exclusive buildings in here and you can only build them with gems. So this I think is the best bet to spend your gems on as far as which one to build. Should you build the cultural site, the farm or the home? I'm going to personally recommend the home, whichever one you choose, either the one that costs 490, which is the level three, or right now I have a level six that's also available at 540, whichever one you choose doesn't matter, but the home is going to be your best bet because you're not only going to be generating more coins from that, which coins are very, very important in research, it's gonna give you more workers. And that has been one of the biggest problems I have faced, especially as a free to play is, 
I never have enough workers. I always want more workers, whether it is to go ahead and do a new upgrade that I have from my research, or whether it's to go ahead and produce some new materials for a new building I unlocked. You really wanna have as many of these workers as possible, and I think that is definitely the best way to spend your gems. Go ahead and get one of these exclusive luxury homes with those gems. You can spend it any way you want, but that is gonna be my personal recommendation. I think it is the best way. The other thing you're gonna notice is that early on, there's kind of like a, a bottleneck between building up your town and running out of space and advancing through the campaign. One is gonna bottleneck the other. So like your city is gonna be holding you back from advancing through the campaign because you're gonna need more coins or you're gonna need more food to go ahead and upgrade your heroes to make them stronger in the campaign. Or you're gonna get really far in research uh, because this goes ahead and generates over time. You get a lot of these research points. You also get them through the quests and stuff, but you're gonna get a ton of those and you're gonna see that like, you get really far through the research and then you're not going to have enough space to build everything. And that's where like advancing through the campaign, like I said, is very important because advancing through the campaign is going to unlock those uh, rewards so that you can go ahead and expand your territory. So you really, really need to keep up with the campaign. In fact, I would say rush through the campaign as fast and as much as you can. That was one of the biggest problems I faced as a new player also was at the beginning, I was kind of fixated on trying to get three stars on every single level instead of just kind of making sure I complete it so that I unlock that territory expansion for free. So that way I could keep up with my research demand of having all these new buildings unlock and having space to build them. So definitely just like get through the campaign and then you can always go back and three star uh, the other levels once you're stronger. I definitely do recommend though you focus on three starring those levels because right now we do have an event glitch in time collect 160 stars from the campaign maps you're going to go ahead get one of these anti-matter but also you can get one of these legendary anti-matter which guarantees a four or five star character which is an epic or legendary you definitely want that especially if you are free to play so just really keep up with the campaign uh, advance as fast as possible through this now there's going to be one other thing that you're going to face is grinding you're going to need to grind the campaign for different materials and there's going to be two different ways to do this the first way is regular levels that are going to give you specific items like this you're going to need specific valuable gems like this to advance research but more importantly there's going to be grind stages for coins and the rewards are only going to be coins so if you need coins this is a great level to go ahead and grind but honestly I haven't faced the coin problem yet my biggest problem for me has been the uh, hero XP so there is another level that lets you grind hero XP um, I haven't unlocked it yet in this chapter but if I go back to five we can see it right here. It has the little icon right here. And this is only going to drop you the experience points to go ahead and upgrade heroes. You definitely want to make sure you get through the campaign levels as much as possible because as you get to a new chapter, that new grind level for whether it's coins or experience points, it's going to yield you a higher amount than the previous chapter. So always do the highest chapter when it comes to grinding for XP or coins. And uh, also getting three stars can help because then you can just do like the auto victory on those. So I would try and make like a priority to three star these specific ones. That way it just makes grinding easier and you don't have to sit here and watch the play out of the match but definitely very, very important to keep that in mind. But that is it for right now. Hopefully that uh, helps you as a new beginner. Stay happy, stay safe. I'll see y'all later. Peace.